Hey, what's happening, everybody? It's Brando McWillie here. I'm um, going to do another, I guess, semi review. I guess all my reviews are kind of semi reviews. But um, I kind of been going through some of my um, uh, firearms that I keep for like defensive purposes. I mean, really, all my firearms are defensive, but these are not guns that I carry every day. These are guns that I have. Um, that pair with maybe a long gun or something like that. And, uh, you know, I've gone through, I, I showed you the PX4 Storm. Um, that's uh, a gun that I really keep in my vehicle at all times. Um, and it's kind of like my get home type gun. Um, I kind of went over in that video the um, advantages in that particular role of having a double action, single action, along with a um, safety. Okay. So. I also like to have proven guns too. So the Breda PX4 Storm is being used by several police departments and stuff like that. So you know, if they're using it, you know, there's maybe some politicking there, but still, it's probably a pretty good firearm. And so far for me, it's been great. Um, another video I just recently did was the Sig P226. Um, that's another proven firearm. Uh, obviously, the Navy SEALs use that firearm and so forth. Um, you know, another excellent firearm, and, and that's generally paired. Um, with my Keltec SU-16. Okay, so basically I have a long gun and a handgun um, that goes together. Now, today I was going to show you what I have that goes with my AR-15. Um, you know, and, and you know, with an AR-15 kind of being like a standard military issue rifle, you know, I figured why not pair that with the standard military issue firearm, which happens to be the Beretta M9. Um, so this is the Breda M9, um, so basically the same thing as your Breda 92FS, um, think, you know, if you look at some of the other videos, there's some subtle differences like the dust cover and the stamping and so forth, but basically it's the same gun. And um, I use this gun specifically for, you know, to be paired with my AR-15. That's really all it's for. I don't carry this gun, I don't, you know, this is my SHTF gun, basically, and it fits that role with the AR-15. So, basically, um, and I'll show you how that works in a second. Um, so basically, uh, when you buy this gun, you know, it's a little unconventional here. It comes in an actual cardboard box. It doesn't come in a um, normal plastic case that most guns come with. And you get a couple magazines, and really what you get in here is, you know, you know just some paperwork. Uh, there's a lock in there. Um, yeah, a little lock in there. Interestingly enough, the um, user's manual says Breda 92FS. Interesting, even though it's the Breda M9 on the top of the box. Okay, that's interesting. Uh, which basically tells you that, you know, it doesn't matter which gun you buy. You know, this is more of a novelty, um, being that it's an M9 versus the 92FS. You know, it really doesn't matter which one you buy. Um, you know, I don't know. The M9, I just went ahead and bought it. Whether or not it's made in the U.S. or made in Italy, don't believe all that hype. You know, it's made in the U.S. It's an awesome gun. It's what we're giving our troops. We have a plant here in the U.S. so we can, you know, fulfill our, you know, the needs of our, of our troops. So, um, you know, when I was in the Army, um, I had fired this weapon. Um, I believe it was called the 92F back then. Yeah, this was back in the early 90s, so this was kind of like... Uh, late 80s shipments that were coming in, so they were kind of brand new at the time. So, you know, don't don't believe, don't worry about the M9 versus 92 FS thing. You know, either one is fine, and don't worry about Italian-made versus American-made. You know, Breda being an Italian company, I'd still rather support the manufacturer, uh, the people uh, working in the factories, you know, in the United States. That's just me. Um, so, the cool thing, some cool things about this particular gun, and let me clear it. It's an empty magazine, and, you know, nothing in the chamber, okay? Some cool things about this particular firearm, you know, it's almost identical to the Breda 92, excuse me, the Breda PX4 as far as its operation. So, if you like the way that the PX4 handles, or if you like the way that the M9 handles, and you're looking to get something a little bit lighter as far as a polyamor pistol, then maybe, you know, you can switch between the 92FS, or the M9, and the PX4 Storm. Because they're very similar, and I hear that the Breda 92, spelled out T-W-O, is similar. I've never owned that one, but, you know, pretty similar gun. Um, the reason I even have this gun out is because I took it to the range and did some shooting with it. Because I don't get to shoot it that often because of the role that it fulfills. I, I like having my stuff kind of ready to go. So when I do go out and shoot, 
um, you know, I take it out, I clean it, and then I put it back where it goes um, and paired with the AR-15. But some cool things to note about this, if you haven't already seen this in, in other videos, is that basically this is a very easy gun to take down. It's a very easy gun to operate, and this gun probably is the most accurate gun that I own as far as a handgun is concerned. This is more accurate than my Glock 17. Um, it is more to me. Uh, it's more accurate than the SIG 226. It is more accurate than the PX4 even. I shoot this a lot better. And really what you're looking at here is such a very large gun with a humongous sight radius. So you got sights back here, your front sights here. So you have this huge sight radius to aim. And the longer you have it, the better, you know, the more accurate you're going to be. I mean, it's, that's just common knowledge there. And, um, you know, so it's very accurate. You know, I used to think that the grip was very large. And it is larger compared to some other guns, but if you hold the grip properly with a two-handed grip, that's not going to be a problem. I think people that feel this, they go, oh, this is too big. You know, you just need to learn to hold it. That's basically what it boils down to. And I had to learn that myself. I used to think it's too big and, you know, never really entertained owning one and so forth. But I, you know, obviously own one now. Um, the takedown, you know, is extremely easy, this. Um, basically, it takes down just like any other gun. You push this... Um, Pull this out. On the other side, there's a button here. Sorry. And this basically folds down like this. And the gun just comes right apart. Okay? So it's not very difficult to take down. Um, to put it back together, basically the same way. And I'm not going to take it down with the springs and stuff like that. But fold this back now, and it's back together. You know, no wonder that, you know, the Army, you know, basically used this gun back in the 80s when they suggested, you know, when they t picked this gun up. So, um, very popular, um, very easy to take down. And a lot of the colleagues I had, fellow soldiers when I was in the Army, you know, loved this because it was really easy to take down and so forth. Um, people complain about weight, but to be quite honest with you, I don't think it weighs all that much. Um, I think it's actually very nicely balanced. It's probably pretty heavy in a holster, you know, riding on your leg. Um, but, again, for me, I don't carry it, so it's not for me you know, for that role. There's other better options probably to carry out there than this uh, with this particular magazine capacity, which happens to be 15, by the way. Or no, excuse me. I think it's 17 in this one. Excuse me. Um, the thing that I like about this in this particular role, um, and I've already gone over a lot of this, is the whole decocker. So basically, if I charge this weapon, I can basically use the decocker to decock it, and I don't have to worry about the gun discharging. And I have a round in the chamber. The safety is off. Nothing can happen. I'm not. It's not going to pull the trigger. Okay. So it's very safe. So in a roll such as the SHTF roll, um, it's a very safe weapon to have. You don't have to worry about it discharging. And this is why the military uses it as well. You know, it's one of the prerequisites they had as far as the safety and stuff like that. When I disengage the safety, then I still have that long double action trigger pull. You now. This conversation, I've had this conversation before. Um, you can go back and look at the PX4 video um, and take a look and see what I'm talking about about that. But I like that. I like that role, and I like the way that, it's, that it fits you know, for me there. Um, and that kind of comes down to some other things that I have going on with this thing. Um, in this role, um, being a primary self-defense gun for my home and stuff like that, I have several magazines. I have a couple more magazines in the bag that I store it in. And I'll show you that bag here in a second. But, you know, I'm not a big believer on having to own 10 magazines per gun. And I probably have too many for this one. But, um, you know, this is my prime. The AR 15 is my primary go to weapon. And this is my primary go to handgun for, you know, when zombies come. So, that tells you that. So, let me show you how I store this thing. Set this aside. This happens to be, and I'm pulling up here, my AR-15 case. Okay, I don't really like this case. I'd like to get another one, but, you know, I'm not going to do that anytime soon. Let me just kind of back this up a little bit and raise up the tripod. So, I normally keep the AR-15 right here. Okay, so the AR-15 sits here. Now, in this pocket here, I have a few things. Now, it's not a complete, you know, drop bag or go bag or anything like that, but 
it's not bad. So in here I have my AR-15 magazines, okay, and I have one that goes in the weapon um, when it's deployed. So it's basically 210 rounds of 5.56. And then over here I have a compass and a notepad. I have a medical kit in there and stuff like that as well. But if over here you notice there's a Black Hawk holster here with the paddle on it. Then I have, these are some 511 Velcro magazine pouches. And you know, these have ready to go um, Breda magazines in here. And I, of course, like I said, I have the um, Black Hawk holster. Now, I use Black Hawk holsters for all my SHTF situations or all my go to type guns. And the Black Hawk holster with a paddle on it, like I said, a Phobos would probably work just as well, is a good alternative. Um, so you can, no matter what you're wearing, if, if it ever does hit the fan, you can throw that holster on and you can go. Okay? And you can also conceal it somewhat okay, you know. But it's not as noticeable as, you know, as trying to hook on a leather holster or something like that. So, you know, you, you, know, you need something that's really deployable, and I was trying to think about that. And So the Black Hawk holster does that for me. So, let me move this out of the way. Um, and it gets heavy. That's the only problem. I like the 511 AR-15 um, bags, and I might switch to that one day. But right now, that's what I have. Uh, what else can I say about this gun? You know, to me, if you go back and look at the Breda PX4 video, it says a lot about the style of the gun. This particular firearm is extremely accurate. I would feel extremely safe and confident in this this firearm's capability. I have no problems with this whatsoever. Um, so, if you guys are looking for something with you know to fill this role, um, or just want a cool gun to go to the range with, this is an awesome gun for that because it's so accurate. If you've never shot one of these, you know you should pick one up and go rent one. It's a pretty available gun. You can rent these at the range all the time. Um, so, I don't know what else to say about it. Um, one thing too, Breda, if you're listening. Um, so Bretta, when I did my PX4 Storm video, Bretta sends me a Twitter message and says, "Hey, you know, nice video, but you need a Bretta, you know, cleaning mat." And I'm like, "Well, you know, I don't have a Bretta cleaning mat, so maybe you guys can send me one." And they said, "Okay, send me your address, and we'll see if we can have one." Well, I still don't have a Bretta cleaning mat, so Bretta, if you're listening, um, I need a Bretta cleaning mat. Okay, so all I have is a Glock one. I'm sorry. So I'm sorry to Sig, I'm sorry to Beretta, I'm sorry to whoever gets offended with that, but that's what I have. So give me, a, give me one, and I will be happy to do a video on it and display it. Um, anything else I can say about this gun? No, not really. You know, I think it's been said, you know, a ton of videos talk about this and shoot it and stuff like that. This is just my opinion on it and what I like, what I don't like. I really don't like anything about it. I mean, it's not. It, this is a perfect gun for my role. Yeah, I love it. So, um, one other tidbit of administration. Um, you know, I should have said this at the beginning of the video because people don't watch the end usually. But um, go and make sure you subscribe to my channel and enter my subscriber contest um, so you can win the Victorinox Spartan Swiss Army knife. Subscribe to the channel, make a comment, and you can win that right there. Okay, it's an awesome knife. And all you got to do is make a comment to the video, but you got to be a subscriber too. I want to thank everybody else that has uh, subscribed, and I really appreciate it. And I'm trying to get better with my Twitter. I don't have, but like, I don't know, I just started the Twitter account, so maybe like 12 people follow me on Twitter, so it kind of sucks. Um, but, um, you know, I would appreciate people following me on Twitter, still Brando McWilly, um, subscribing to my channel. And um, it's been kind of growing a lot here over the past like three weeks, so I really appreciate it. Um, that's about all I have. If you have anything else, you know, please comment. Let me know what's going on. Take care, guys.